Yes, nice to have you with us in the Inner Sanctum on a Tuesday morning. And today we just head up the road further up Royal Parade and have a chat to Sam Doherty, the co-captain of the Blues, who joins us. Good morning, Doc. Morning. It's a, a lovely morning outside. I um I did get told by Joey that someone was supposed to go for a walk this morning and um, may have left it out because it's a bit too cold and white, rainy. Well, well White is the only one that's not in walking apparel, so I assume you're pointing at him. So you are walking? Well, it's not over yet. We'll see. Well, I'm not walking in that rubbish. It's like the, it's like the world's about to end out. I've got a there. treadmill at home. I'll just walk on a treaty when I get home. I don't need to be walking in that rubbish. You'll be training in it though later on today, Doc? Yeah, yeah, we are. It's, it'll be a great morning session for us out there, but um, no, no, we've, we actually don't start for another couple of hours, so go in, have a nice breakfast and roll around the club this morning. So what was yesterday? Was yesterday a review day? Uh, yeah, well, we don't actually usually come in on a um, day after a game on a seven-day break, but... Thought a little change up. Came in late after yesterday. Got a bit of a massage. Did our review and um, had a team dinner. Get the boys together and then um, train today and then day off tomorrow. So, what was the theme of the review? What did you focus on? What did Tiggy focus on? Is it that? Is it the window where they came at you, or was it the good stuff to get to that point where they had to come at you? What was the the theme of it? Uh, mixture of mixture of the whole lot. Um, we obviously got smacked around the ball in terms of the centre clearances. So. That really hurt us from a territory point of view. Yep. Um, they they were able to play the game in their half, especially in the last quarter. They um they took the territory, took territory, put it in their forward half, and we weren't able to get it out. So when that happens, it's sort of the pressure pressure gauge keeps going up, and they were able to score goals. And um, obviously, you could see on TV our, our last quarter was um, was probably poor, pretty poor defensively. Um, so just looking at where we can improve and how we can get better in that in that aspect, but not forgetting that. Um, we played some pretty bloody good footy for three quarters, um, so making sure we don't lose sight of um, that as well. But um, there's obviously some areas that we need to tighten up, and that's what is that's what's going to make us a good footy team. Is when if when we can play our way for the four quarters, um, we're a very good side. But at the moment, there's when the when the gates open, it's it's hurting us too much. So, what was the mood like after the game? Because as you said, there was good and then there was bad. Um, you almost got that scalp that you're you're desperately seeking. What was the mood like? Uh, there's a fair bit of frustration post game um, to to put in three quarters of some really good tough footy that matches it with the best side, one of the best sides in the comp at the moment. Um, but a very big element of frustration in terms of um, that last quarter, which we weren't which we weren't able to play the way that we wanted to play, and um, as as players we want to win, and that's. That's what happens post game when you when you when you let one slip and um, but in in everything the dogs are pretty good in the last quarter like you, I think they won seventeen center clearances in a row in a row and they really played probably what they're probably sitting on the other end going we really played our way in the last quarter and were able to get the game on our terms and, and pin the ball in the forward half which they did really really well and um, we just weren't able to to sort of combat or wrestle the momentum back and um, they scored heavily in that quarter. Carlton fans are getting frustrated and I think the general footy supporter don't know what to make of you as a footy team because you are showing these glimpses. You are competitive against the good teams but not getting the job done. So internally, how would you describe the mood and from a leadership perspective as well? How, What are you saying to your players, that balance between, yeah, we're playing pretty well but we're not getting the results against the teams that you want to be able to, to beat? Yeah, well, probably pretty similar to exactly that where... Our our majority of our games is stacking up against any any team in the comp, which is a positive in itself. But um, the hard part at the moment is to be a very good side. You need to just do that for longer. And and our challenge at the moment is when we're letting it, when we're sort of shifting away, or teams are getting momentum on us, we aren't able to sort of hold up in that one quarter. And and really, that's the difference between the really good sides and the the teams that are just below them. And at the moment, we're just a team that's just below them. At the moment, we're our, our game style and our and our team is is good enough to match it if we can get that last bit, which that's the that's the challenge of AFL footy is is staying consistent across 120 minutes of the game, and um, we're in the process of of trying to learn how to do that and and get that done as a group, and um, we're not shying away from it. That's it's pretty bloody obvious that that's what's happening. But um, <clears throat> in terms of the messaging, it's we just need to do what we do for for longer in the game, and that's. Uh, it's it's frustrating, but it's a positive is that the way we play stacks up. But it's frustrating that that one quarter is really hurting us at the moment, and um, we're just looking to tighten it up and and look what's happening in that time and how we can um, combat what they're doing and in terms of um, how when they get on top, how do we play and how can we stem the momentum or get it back into a 
bit of a contest in a, in a way um, so that we can wrestle back to get it back on our terms. Can you, sorry, Huff, but can, can you feel it out there? Because, I mean, you're not in the centre square, um, but can you feel it when the momentum's getting away from you? Um, or is it something that you only sort of realise after it's happened, after you've lost control? How, I'm interested as you, you as a player and someone that understands the game as well as you do, it's easy to see it sometimes back at TV in, on the TV or up in the stands, but when you're actually playing it, can you feel it changing? Uh, well, from a defensive point of view, you generally feel there's a lot of inside 50s <laughs> That's and the, right. the ball's being pinned and you're getting a lot of contests inside 50. So generally behind the ball, you probably feel it more than anyone. Um being able to fix it, that's the that's mm. the million dollar question. If we all had that, there'd be some bloody good teams in the league. So um no, we're 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 working on I don't think recognising when we're under the pumps the hard part, it's about trying to r- wrestle it back and get it the game back on more of a fifty fifty but, but there's times in the game like in, in that third quarter, it, it was all our way. It was like we had the ball pinned in our half, we were kicking goals, we were winning contests. So it's not like we don't have momentum for the game, it's just Teams these days in footy, the momentum swings are so big. So both sides, you need to be able to maximise when you've got it and then you need to try and stem the bleeding mm. when you Absorb don't. It. And that's that's the bit at the moment that we're not getting right. When when we have the momentum, we're, we're scoring and we're playing some really good footy. But when teams have got the momentum against us, that's the opposite as well. So we're trying to keep one side and then just tighten up the other side a little bit. And that's one thing uh, that's noticeable when when the momentum goes against you that, that the style of play is very very different. It was, it was really slow and stagnant and and almost concerning at one stage in that uh, late in the third quarter, last quarter when they were coming, because it was so daring and dashing and aggressive when you we did have momentum in the game. Um, is is the key to to stopping the momentum playing like that regardless of the situation, or are there mechanisms you need to put in place to get it back to neutral and then take charge again with your, your aggressive style? Well, I, th- I think that there's probably a mixture of in the middle. Um, what we probably did on the weekend um, over a small period of the game is, is we did, we went quite slow, which the dogs were winning the contest at, yep. that, at that stage of the game. We won the contest for a lot of the game, but at that point of the game, they were on top of us in terms of a contest point of view. And um, by going so slow, we kept putting the ball back in a contest, which was actually suiting them at that stage. So yep. um it's, you don't want to go breakneck speed because the momentum's against you. You turn that over, it's another goal. And then there's another goal and then guys tighten up a little bit. So there's a mixture between that. Ideally, you can possess the ball for a bit a bit longer than what we were on the weekend just to take a little bit of the sting out of the game in terms of um, the momentum of it. Um, and we weren't able to do that and for a variety of reasons. It's, it's, that's what happens. But um, I think there's a, there's a mixture between the two. You don't want to go super slow that just keeps putting the ball back in a contest when they have a position, they, then they have a position to win it back and then they're coming back at us again. But mm. you don't want to go full breakneck speed where the ground's completely open and any turnover is going to be a score one way or the other. And um, yeah, that's part of, that's part of learning. That's part of learning for our group. And um, I know I, can't, I come in here every time and it's a bit diplomatic, but we're, we're trying to be better than we were last week. And um, we had a great lesson on the weekend. So I heard David King talking on Fox footy on Sunday night. I think it might've been about, Carlton and saying that he believes you're better than you were last year. Is that something that's consistent within the group and the coaching staff at the moment? Do you believe you're better than you were in 2020 as you sit now? Uh, yeah, I would, I would say that. I think, I think we're a, a more well-rounded group. Um, uh, it's, when you look at the win-loss, we're, we're, we're three and five and it's easy to get seduced by that. Um, but again, I, I think we are a better, better team and, and more well-drilled than we were last year. Um, as I said, there's there's elements of some of the themes from last year in terms of our runs against are still there, but we're um, we're working bloody hard to try and arrest that and and, and change that in game. And um, I think we've we've put in some some good performances. We put in some poor ones this year. Um, the ability to stay consistent week to week and and throughout games is something that we need to work on. And that's um, that's not shying away from where we are at the moment. That's just the team that we happen to be right now, and um, it's something that we look forward to. Um, getting better at throughout the, throughout this year. Harry Mackay, did you did you think he'd be as good as he's becoming as um, quickly? Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, this this year, I reckon was the the first year. I, I, we always knew he had talent, and he's got a really high work ethic in terms of his position and his his dedication to his his craft, and he's had that for his whole career. So he's the from day one when he got here until now, he's always been. 
doing little drills about his marking and his and and whatnot. And this year was the year that I was like, this guy's going to be very very good because we've got some pretty good tall defenders at our club. And at stages through the preseason, he was being a handful for Weeders. Which if anyone's a handful for Weeders, you're going to be a bloody good player because he's he he gets most guys most weeks and plays really well. So um, I think the thing that separates Harry from a lot of guys is he's just so long. So mm. you really have to be a tall defender to play on him or you've got to be really good at bodying him out and not letting him have a jump because if he gets a jump at anything, he's going to have 30 centimetres wingspan higher than anyone else. So um, he's uh, he's having a super year, which is which is really good for us. And then Jack Silvani. Um, I, had to, I really felt for him on the weekend. He just can't seem to have a run at it. I think it's the third time he's been subbed out injured just this year. And this time was just a, a stray friendly fire shoulder into the, into the head. Um, how's he going? Uh, uh, he's uh, frustrated. Uh, like anyone that's having a year the way he has, he plays some, when he's in, he's playing really well. And then he just keeps getting a knock or um, had the, the shoulder issue, came back in, shoulder issue again, a couple of weeks off, comes back in, gets a concussion. That, it's a frustrating time for him. Um, the thing that I'll give him though is he's, he's working bloody hard and his form is showing the work he's putting in behind the scenes and um, he's gained a lot of respect off his teammates. Um, we really love playing with him. He, he gives everything he's got on game day and um, it, hurt, it hurts you watching someone that's putting in so much time and effort into their, their game and um, becoming an elite footballer and then they just keep getting a knock or they keep getting something that just pulls them back. So, um, yeah, it's frustrating time for him, but it, it, he understands that um, that this is some, somewhat what happens in footy. There's just there's times in your career where you get a really unlucky stretch and um, that doesn't stop you from working hard. And when he's when he when he's ready, he'll come back in the team and, and play his role like he has been. What about your partner in crime, Patrick Cripps? So everyone's talking about Patrick Cripps at the moment because uh, they say he's not performing to the level he has in previous years. He's out of contract at the end of the year. Does the big deal come now? Does he uh, get offloaded? Does the other clubs sniff blood in the water and start to come for him? How's he going with all this? Not not being the Patrick Cripps that we know initially, but also the the world that is Patrick Cripps at the moment in in footy. Yeah, well, it's a it's. It seems like every time I do a radio interview or anything, I get asked about him. Um, well, he's pretty big business. Yeah, he is, and, and that's that's what comes with the territory of being such a good player in the AFL. And um, yeah, what, what, whatever happens with the contract, it's it seems in a good place. And I, I, I can't tell you a hell of a lot because I'm not in, t- in terms of the no- negotiations or anything. But it seems like he's in a good place. He's he's bloody invested in making our club um, a very good footy club, and that's the only thing I can judge him off. And he's as invested as I've ever seen across his career. So um, all it's all pointing in the right direction for me. I, I'm less fussed about his kicks, marks, handballs. Um, it, it's his intent. And he's been he's, he's been doing that for the whole year in terms of the way he's supposed to be playing his role. And although it's not all falling his way at the moment, that's okay. That's Everyone has times like that throughout their career. And he'll bounce back. He's a bloody good player. And um, yeah, we'll just see. He'll... In my opinion, it's it's. Uh, I get sick of talking about it a little bit because it's. It, there's nothing you can do about negotiations. They take time, and that's what they are. And we will just let it roll on, and we'll go from there. Yeah, the footy stuff is what I'm more interested yeah. in. I must admit, because he's been such a good player at such a high level for so long. I'm wondering how it sits with him, um, not being able to do what he, I imagine, wants to do, is able to do, has been able to do for the last couple of years consistently. Because when you set the bar that high, I mean, if you're not quite there, I imagine if you're that level of excellence that would be really annoying yeah and and he's a he's a bloody proud individual so um he's, he's working extremely hard to try and add new elements to his game and um the game the game has changed a little bit this year in in the way that it's played and um that always requires a, a, a bit of adjustment and he's he's working through that at the moment and um i think there's there's times where um he's trying so hard to get it right that it can sometimes hurt him mm. and we're seeing that across the across the comp, the, the teams that, although that it's sort of counterintuitive, but like sometimes you've got to work smarter, not harder, and that's that's an element of a lot of our guys throughout our team at the moment is we're trying so hard that it's actually hurting us in a, in a, in a way, and yep. um, I, I can't tell you exactly the in and outs of what he does because I'm not a midfielder and I can't do it. So, um, it, but he's working extremely hard with our coaches and 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 himself and getting his, his body right to play week to week and um, he'll, he'll be fine. I, I, I'm less stressed about it than um, probably most are. I, I, maybe it's because I've got a lot of trust and a lot of faith that um, he works so hard on his game that he'll figure it out and he'll, he'll be fine.
he's he's had moments. He had a moment against Essendon where he, you know you can see how invested he is in in the team. Is it is it the game changing? You sort of touched on it before. Is his body okay? Because I mean. Three disposals in the second half, that's not Patrick Cripps. When the game was there to be won, usually it's him standing up for your team, and he just can't seem to be able to do it at the moment. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. His, his body's fine. He's, he's, if you run out on the weekend, it, it doesn't really matter. I, I, have a, I have a bit of a belief that it doesn't matter what during the week happens to you or how, how your body's going. You run out on game day, you're there to perform, and um, the man in the stand doesn't care if you've got a sore ankle or you've got a sore shoulder or whatever. Like That's just that's the reality of the game. There's probably 16 other blokes in the other team that are running through the same thing. So um, I, I don't think that's it. I, I think there's sometimes in footy, there's just there's things just don't go your way. And I had it last year. So it's the middle of last year. I was I felt like I was doing the exact same thing, just couldn't get near it. And that's there's just times in your career that that's what happened. And um, the the great ones find a way out of it. And and as I said, I'm he will he'll find a way through it. And I've no doubt that. Um, he'll be playing some bloody good footy throughout this year and um, it's important we just don't all get caught up in everything that happens mm. week to week and um, just trust the process. He's, he's working bloody hard and he, he'll get there. Zach Williams is the other one that I want to talk to you about because he has come from your club, as in the halfback flanker club, the running <laughs> defender club, um, and he's trying to become a midfielder. It doesn't happen overnight, I understand that, but he's come to the footy club to be a midfielder. Are we all underestimating how hard it is to make that adjustment from the running defender to the midfielder? I think I think he's got um, a couple of elements. He's, he's got the change in change in position from a week to week point of view, and then his body hasn't allowed him to play continually in a row. So I think he's what he missed round one, played round two, might have missed round three, played but round four, missed round five. It's been very. Sort of, it hasn't been an idea. No, which in terms of playing consistent AFL level football, that that's it's hard to do that because you're sort of breaking in. You're, you're worried about your body, and um, he he's working extremely hard. And that's that's um, everyone will say. That. I'll say that about everyone to be honest. But he's um he's ad- he's adjusting to a, a new footy club, a new role, and his body's not a hundred like it's clearly not hundred percent at the moment because he's in and out of the club. So um, he's just got that time. It's just going to take time throughout this year for him to adjust to all of those different elements and, and new elements of what footy's producing for him right now. And um, again, he's, he's a super talented kid, so I, I'm not too stressed about the week that he had on, on last weekend. It's it's going to be a perfect learning opportunity for him. And, and I'm, maybe that's the glass half full in me that he plays not as well as he would like to on the weekend. He's, he's now going to have a really good week of reflection and, and trying to figure out exactly what makes him a gun footballer and um, being out there week to week is going to help him be able to learn the lesson, produce it, go and fix it, play, produce, and just keep that cycle going. It, it, is, it does get quite tough when you're in and out of the team. So um, he'll be fine. Could he, could he go back to that halfback role to get confidence in his game, confidence in his body if he can't play that midfield role? I know you've got yourself and there's Adam Saad and, and, and so forth, but... Do you have to do something like that potentially to get him feeling good about himself? Yeah, and oh, that's the that, that that is the other option is is you can play him down back, and um, I think what he's what he produced um, over the preseason and early before he he sort of went in and out of the team when he's playing mid half forward, he was kicking goals, he was having a bit of the ball, he was very tough, um, and I think we've sort of just lost sight of all that at the moment because he's sort of in and out, can't get a gauge on how he's mm. playing because he's. Um, obviously his body's letting him down. And um, I think you still stick with it at the moment. I think that he trained the whole preseason there and did, did a really good job over the preseason. But um, his body hasn't allowed him to be able to produce that consistently throughout the year. And um, I, I'm, I'm backing him in. I, I, I see the work he does and I, I see the, the player he is during the week and, and during training and um, what he has produced for us at the start of the year. And um, another one that's at the moment, if you if you if you're looking just on last week, you'd say he's, he's out of form. But um, it's it is it's a tough game at the moment, and that's that's the that's what we need to remember. And um, but I full faith that he'll get back to his best footy this year. Sam Doherty, Carlton co-captain with us in the Inner Sanctum. The, the D's on Sunday at the MCG three twenty. Check your local guides. That's going to be what well, is currently the biggest test in footy. Can I just take you away from? Off on field for the moment and get to off field. The, the situation at Richmond, I don't expect you to talk about that specifically, but we were talking this morning about we don't see these incidents anymore that the players are out in the frack hour at a night spot 
early hours of the morning. We don't see that. We don't hear about it anymore. Um, is that because it doesn't happen as much or is it because you're, you're doing it differently? You just spend time with each other. Do you have a chance to let your hair down or, or just go and live a normal life in those sort of scenarios these days? Um, I would say it doesn't happen as much, probably because we're, we're we get educated a lot about it, and we also understand the ramifications behind what happens if something happens like this. And um, I think there's elements that you get to to live your life. I wouldn't say it's as a normal person, and that's just what comes with our territory of how we play and, and our job. So, um, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting one. It, it doesn't happen very much, even from the start of my career to now. It, it's very rare that anything happens off field, but. Um, there's definitely, um, as a player, there's situations that you purposely don't put yourself into that has a risk of, and if you're talking nightclub is really late, that's not the ideal thing to do because there's not much that happens well after that. But um, it's 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 part of where footy is these days. Is is obviously you play week to week and you need to recover and you need to get your body right. And the game the game's extremely demanding that you can't just go out every weekend. And whereas early in my or even early in my career you you could go out every weekend and you could enjoy yourself and rock up Monday and train. And But I find the game catches up with you pretty quickly these days and um, they get strewed into you pretty quickly at a footy club. Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night, back in the, my day, Whitey. No dramas here. You're out and about having a great time. So how do you how do you chill out then? How do you how do you allow yourself to chill out? You talked about having a team dinner last night to socialise and get back together again, but how do you just chill out together? Yeah, well, there's during the while, I go play golf. I've been able to play for a, a number of weeks now, which is... Been a bit frustrating, but mm, I do that. enjoy that. Um, but yeah, there's there's hobbies outside of footy. It's I'm not saying we don't go for a drink. Well, a lot of times we after games we can go for a drink together. And but it's I find these days it's more you go sit at a quiet pub and enjoy each other's company rather than you heading out to a nightclub where yep. it's it's packed to the brim. And um, I think we still we, we we get a lot of time off and a lot of time to relax. And it's about finding what works for you and where you gain energy off field go and do those things there's guys study guys i think that's it's it's not bad in terms of that element it's just there is there is parts of your life that you you do just sort of park away a little bit because it, it has risk of one affecting your footy and your body to allow which doesn't allow you to play as i was saying before it doesn't allow you to play at, the high, at your high level and that's what you want to do that's what you get paid to do so um, that that decision is always in the back of your mind in in anything you do, from anything you put in your mouth to what you drink to how late you stay up to what time what time you go to yeah what time you go to bed how many hours sleep you get. There's mm. there's a lot more to being an AFL footballer than just rocking up and playing on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon for you this week. Just remind yourself of that one. Three twenty Melbourne, the biggest test in footy. Can't wait to see it happen at the MCG. Good luck to you, Doc. Appreciate your insight as always. Thank you. No worries. Thanks for having me in again. Sam Doherty with us, the co-captain of the Blues, the inner sanctum of the Carlton Football Club. Johnny Bowden's got the latest news. He's the voice of news in this country. After